Coming up on today's episode of Airborne Unlimited, Gulfstream's new super mid-sized jet logs first flight. DOT and FAA reveal prime integrator for ATC modernization. A petition to stop landing fees at FFZ. Welcome to Airborne Unlimited. I'm your host, Talon Lee. Let's get into today's stories. Gulfstream's new super mid-sized jet logs first flight. Gulfstream's newest addition to its next-gen lineup, the super mid-sized G300, is officially airborne. The jet lifted off from Ben Gurion International Airport, staying in the air for 2 hours and 25 minutes. The crew took the aircraft to 30,000 feet and cruised at Mach 0.75, checking off the major boxes needed to kick off the flight test campaign. Gulfstream says the cabin is the largest in the segment, paired with 10 panoramic oval windows across two living areas. The layout seats up to 10 passengers, including a full galley, and comes with plenty of space for bags. Cabin altitude tops out at 4,800 feet while cruising at 41,000 feet, and the air system pumps in 100% fresh air using plasma ionization. Up front, the G300 uses Gulfstream's Harmony flight deck, complete with six touchscreens and phase of flight logic that organizes information based on what the crew is doing. Range numbers put the G300 in competitive territory. It can fly 3,600 nautical miles at Mach 0.8 or 3,000 nautical miles at Mach 0.84, thanks to a clean Gulfstream wing and a pair of Honeywell HTF 7250G engines. Before the jet ever left the ground, the program logged more than 2,000 hours of testing, covering everything from structural checks to systems integration. After the break, Airbus closes on acquisition of six Spirit Aerosystem sites. Looking for a new generation of proven and efficient aviation power plants that boast modern engineering, electronic ignition, and both direct and gear drive systems? With 100 horsepower to 240 horsepower, the Skyline and Redline engines offer uncommon value in an overpriced industry. Whether you are looking for fixed wing or rotor, MW Fly Americas has been established to service the American market with dedication and expertise. MWFlyAmericas.com The legendary BD4C program is building an exciting future for those who want a rugged four-seat family flyer with a proven history. The SureWings program produces a complete kit and builder assist program that gives you everything you need to be flying a BD4CS in record time. For conventional kit builders, BD Aviation has parts, partial kits, and full kits for the 190 mile per hour BD4C that has logged thousands of hours. Visit SureWings.com and BDAviation.com for more detail. Welcome back. Now let's take a trip around the patch for some shorter stories. Airbus closes on acquisition of six Spirit Aerosystem sites. Airbus announced it has closed on the transaction with Spirit Aerosystems for the acquisition of six industrial sites that produce aerostructures and components for Airbus commercial aircraft programs. The aircraft production sites and assets of Spirit Aerosystems were carved up and acquired in a three-way series of transactions in which Boeing also acquired more than half of Spirit Aerosystem sites dedicated to production of Boeing aircraft components. The transactions enabled both airframers to gain direct control over critical parts of their supply chains. Coast Guard shows off sniper chops with shot to engine block. The Coast Guard published a short video showing off a recent drug interdiction by the Cutter Monroe, highlighting impressive marksmanship from an airborne sniper. The Coast Guard has been setting a historic record of drug seizures in fiscal year 2025. The video is exciting because an aerial marksman aboard a hovering helo makes a perfect shot on the boat's engine block from afar. Online fans probably note the correct and proper use of the Barrett as an anti-material rifle, a different role from its pop culture sniper reputation. Remember, Pearl Harbor campaign aims to preserve fleeting history. The Pearl Harbor Museum commemorated December 7th with a campaign to raise $51 million to restore the aging battlefield. After 84 years, the field has aged quite a bit, despite good upkeep and attentive groundskeeping. The hangars, control tower, and runways are all the same original fixtures that were attacked in 1941, standing tall as a witness to one of our country's worst attacks. Remember, Pearl Harbor will be the, quote, most ambitious and consequential transformation in Pearl Harbor Aviation Museum's history, end quote, raising the funds to renovate Hangar 79. U.S. Air Force Thunderbirds welcome new commander. 
the U.S. Air Force Thunderbirds Air Demonstration Squadron, welcomed Lieutenant Colonel Alexander Prevendar as their new commander for the upcoming 2026-27 air show seasons. He succeeds outgoing Commander Colonel Nathan Malafa in a ceremony at Nellis Air Force Base in Las Vegas. Prevendar is a command pilot with more than 3,300 flight hours and previously served as the Commander's Action Group Chief for the 9th Air Force. While there, he synchronized strategic communication, operational messaging, and senior leader engagements across its 20-nation area of responsibility. That's it for today's Trip Around the Patch. Let's get back to the rest of the news. DOT and FAA reveal prime integrator for ATC modernization. The Trump administration has officially locked in its pick to spearhead the biggest upgrade to America's air traffic control system in decades. Transportation Secretary Sean Duffy and FAA Administrator Brian Bedford announced on December 4th that Virginia-based national security company Paraton has been selected as the program's prime integrator. The prime integrator is a first-of-its-kind role, meant to centralize leadership as the FAA transitions to a brand new ATC architecture. Paraton's job will go far beyond just system upgrades, making it the central coordinator overseeing all modernization efforts to ensure that the FAA's new capabilities roll out in sync. The contract is structured with incentives for hitting milestones, plus penalties for delays, as the administration aims to complete the overhaul by the end of 2028. Duffy said, quote, we are thrilled to be working with Paraton because they share President Trump's drive to modernize our skies safely at record speed. Working together, we are going to build on the incredible progress we've already made and deliver a state-of-the-art air traffic control system that the American traveling public and our hardworking air traffic controllers deserve, end quote. The announcement follows a $12.5 billion initial investment from President Trump's One Big Beautiful Bill, which jump-started the modernization push earlier this year. After these messages, a petition to stop landing fees at FFZ. It's time to upgrade your power plant to the first FAA-certified clean sheet engine design in over 60 years. Delta Hawk's jet fuel-powered liquid-cooled turbocharged engine produces turbine performance at 40% better fuel efficiency of typical reciprocating engines, while also achieving exceptional reliability and significant reduction in cost of ownership. Reserve your engine package today at DeltaHawk.com. Welcome back. A petition to stop landing fees at FFZ. Aero News friends over at Stop ADSB Abuse have long profiled the infernal systems where ADSB data can track aircraft activity for fully automated billing at participating airports. Right now, Arizona's Falcon Field, FFZ, is looking to impose some landing fees of their own, and locals are putting up a fight. The Phoenix area is plush with flight training, but it's a delicate ecosystem. For those who haven't made the pilgrimage to Phoenix before, it's a very busy training scene. So much so they've had to impose a delicate ballet between instructors and students around the only VOR and ILS duo in the area. The prospect of landing fees should be met with horror for operators in the area. Even if they aren't the ones incurring an extra 50 bucks a flight, their field will get the traffic of FFZ regardless. The petition cites Falcon Field's creation by the government itself in 1941, as well as its federally funded, tax-paid public use status. Their brief states, quote, We respectfully call on the city of Mesa to, one, withdraw the landing fee proposal immediately, two, engage with the aviation community before making decisions that impact safety, training, airport accessibility, and financial hardship to users, and three, honor the historical legacy of Falcon Field and uphold its federal obligations as an open, public-use airport, end quote. And that's our show for today. You can catch episodes of Airborne on YouTube, Roku, or Fire TV. Just search for Aero News or Airborne. And don't forget to follow us on social media. Thanks for watching. 